Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Monday Madness. If you guys are wondering why I'm holding my phone, I actually forgot all my equipment at home. Um, I just came back from Cape Town, obviously. What we are trying to do is just make the videos more chilled. Um, I feel like every single video that I've been making feels so forced to me as well. Um, because you obviously do research on all these videos and you see 8 second intros, 10 second intros. But it doesn't show you guys who I am as a person. I'm really calm. Um, I obviously love having fun as well, all those type of things. So what are we going to do today? I actually obviously go through the videos first and then I get to the topic. So the one pair we're doing today is GBPUSD. So I'm going to be showing you guys how you could have traded GBPUSD. Obviously we had that big move to the downside. So I want to show you guys, if you understand where the big move is going, it's really simple to trade it on the small time frames and just keep running that, that trade to the downside. So that's what the video is going to be about. We're also going to do Euro GBP in the end which is a really important factor towards trading GU as your GBP is the correlation for, for GBP USD. So let's get straight into the charts. Hey guys, okay, let's go into the first pay. Um, I know I'm holding all the phones and stuff, so this mic actually connects to my laptop and at the moment I don't have my mic on my phone as well. So it's a little bit of a weird setup today, but it's all good in the end, it's still still worth it. So we obviously spin this wheel. So this wheel has everything from currencies to indices to cash giveaways. So we spin the wheel to keep it random so we don't analyze the same pairs over and over. So the first pair is pound USD. So pound USD is obviously one fast moving pair. Um, so if you have a small account, a lot of people will say that you should maybe trade it if you have a small account because it moves faster. Um, I will say the opposite because if you have a small account, that volatility will, will obviously move you to hit stop losses quicker um, rather than TPs as well. So it's a really big gamble. But let's go into GBP USD and let's see how you could have capitalized on that pay last week. Hey guys, alright, so this is GU last week. So obviously, we, before we go into it, we want to understand what happened last week and how we could have capitalized on that. So it's really important to go back into the previous week and keep back testing, keep understanding because if we look at GU running to the downside this week, same thing happened there, same thing happened there, same thing happened there. So the pattern does repeat over time frames. So you do need to back test every week and see where did you miss opportunity based on your strategy that you're trading. So for me, I won't say I'm just a swing trader, day trader, I trade on the one minute. I have so many different things happening at all times, but obviously I mostly prefer trading long term. So if I look at that Friday close, so we can see it's a big bearish candle closing to the downside. So already what you can see is that price closed below our area of the bond. So we already we knew we're in a starting trend. So a lot of times where traders see price moving into the new lows, what's the first thing you're thinking? Let's buy because it's going to go up. Eventually it's going to go up. But what you should be thinking is, okay, well, we're going to keep selling at this point all the way into that lows. Okay. So if we get a pullback, we're going to sell. But for now, we just need to continue selling. So already you're trying to identify selling pressure within that specific range. So for me personally, if I do see price is in a selling trend um, on the smaller time frames, and it's in a little bit of a middle of nowhere trade. Um, but you do like trading trading that specific market. The first thing I will do is I'll drop to 30 minute or 15 minute time frame. So you want to focus on lower time frame trading. So if you are a longer term trader, close down the pair and focus on something different. So let me quickly take you guys now through what I would have done if I was in this position. So Monday morning, we're ready. We're not looking back. We don't want to keep, we don't even care. We're looking for sales number one. And we obviously want to understand what's going to happen going into this week. As soon as we have that break of structure, okay, then we know, okay, well, there is a new lower low. What happens after lower low, a low high. So then you can add your technicals in to obviously identify where will price be selling from. So number one, you can start with your FIB and we all know the pullback to the 61 to 78% FIB. Okay. Then you can also put in your trend line. So there's so many different strategies, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, perfect sell to the downside. And even if you look at your candlestick patterns, per perfect, perfect spinning tops and then running into evening star formation. And even if that doesn't work for you and you can still trade a breakout. So basically trade a breakout and a retest. So 
every single trade will work out. It, the only difference will be your stop loss, your take profit, those type of things. So if you know that you're trading from the trend line, you're always going to have a little bit of a bigger stop loss. Okay. We also have that triangle formation lining up there as well. Um, if you trade from your FIB, you'll most probably have a little bit of a smaller stop loss. Okay. But in the same thing, it shows you that you can make money both sides of the way of the market um, and also in different ways. So now we form that lower low, lower high. Then we need to break that to continue selling. As soon as we create, break that, that level over there, then obviously all you can do is just do the same thing. Wait for pullback into your selling block over there. So in this instance, you guys can see that we are missing, um, missing the selling block. So that's where you as a trader need to have that trader instinct that needs to kick in and needs to tell you, well, this is what I need to do because of this and this and this and this. So I've said this multiple times that candlesticks is actually the reason or the indication that price is selling or buying. So we can see that even on the pullback, we have, there's a pin bar morning stock formation. Okay. There's a hangman candle on the bottom of a trend and there's a pullback. So as price reaches this area over here, we can see a nice evening star formation forming. Hangman candle on top of a trend, bearish engulfing candle. So there's multiple candles over there. So already we know that, okay, we are most probably looking for a sell from the 38% FIB. Okay. So 60 to 71, 61 to 78% FIB is mostly a, a trend trade. 38% FIB is usually a continuation. So we sold from the 61 as a trend trade, and now we're going to trade from the continuation FIB. So what you can also do is also drop down time frames and look within that range. Let me quickly just find the range within that range for another shift of momentum. So let's quickly take that out. So now price is dipping into this area. We're seeing all that kind of see confirmations, evening star formation, evening star formation. So now we also see there's a high, 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 low, high, high. And then as soon as price breaks this level now, we can also now add our FIB on the smaller time frames and look for that smaller time frame trade from the 61 to 78% FIB. And then from there have the drop off to the downside. After that trade, we know we have a low. So we're going to be focusing on the previous low once again as well. Okay. So there we have the low again and price pushes up. Obviously, a lot of retail traders buying because of a double bottom, but it's actually just forming a lower high. And as soon as we break through, what do we do? We look for a pullback FIB, 61 to 78% FIB over there, or your trend line breakout or support becoming resistance or pretty much anything that, that you feel comfortable with trading. And then once again, what's the key? Candlestick formations, multiple morning star candle, bearish engulfing candle, um, so many different candles, obviously they're lining up for the trade and you have a nice sell off to a downside as well. So already we had three good trades, winning trades, and we had one losing, oh, not one losing trade, we had one missed trade, okay? There was a low, so as soon as we break through, we sold from the 61, now we're going to sell from the 38% FIB. And on that 38% FIB, we have that perfect spinning, spinning tops, uh, evening star formation, and another drop off to the downside. Okay. Then that was our low. So now we're probably going to sell from the 61. So they priced dips perfectly into the 61 again, and a perfect drop off to the downside. Then all of a sudden, we can see that the price is selling, but data is getting a little bit cluttered. So... You can still um, follow the same rules. It will obviously work out, not obviously, but it will work out in this instance um, and you can keep selling as well. So now I added a tip that I can help you guys with as well. Um, if you see a little bit of a bigger zone like that, what I will usually do is I will have orders stacked within that range. So rather than just selling there, I'll sell there, have a sell limit there, and I'll have a sell limit there. So if price is obviously pushing against you, then you just keep entering the market. So you sell again and you sell again, finally sitting with a one to eight um, risk reward, meaning that for the next trade, I need to lose seven times before actually losing. Okay, so let's quickly get into the shift of momentum now. So we had the lower low, lower high, then a higher low, indication of a possible reversal to the top side. Then we have a lower high, so not yet, we're not selling yet, and then we create a lower low, okay? Then all of a sudden price pushes all the way and we break the structure to, structure to the top side. And that indicates then that we are in a buying trend. And then from there, we can obviously see price dipping into the 38% FIB, 
and then we obviously continue with the same thing. So this is a really good way um, to, to trade if you are in a low or high or prices floating in the middle. Look at the bigger trend and try and jump in on the smaller time frames. But once again, I need you guys to understand that you, you as a trader need to go and back test this. You need to go and put in the work. I've put in eight years of work for me to understand the market like I do today. So you need to go and put in the work. Back test it on your certain pairs. Don't just focus on the 30 minute. Focus on the 15 minute, the one hour. See what works for you and obviously try and make it work for yourself. Okay, guys. So that was GU for you. So let's quickly look at uh, the second pair. So the wheel is spinning and we will decide on what pair we are looking at. It seems like it is going to be Euro GBP. So that was a close second, almost NASDAQ. Obviously, a lot of you guys love trading NASDAQ. Um, fun fact, when I started trading, you couldn't actually trade NASDAQ. So we only had currencies, which is actually a topic for another day as well. So Euro GBP is not a pair that I trade um, personally. It's something that I use for correlation purposes. So throughout time, you realize that the Euro pairs doesn't have influence within the market. So meaning that if Euro USD goes down, it's the dollar increasing, not the Euro weakening. So with Euro GBP, if Euro GBP is buying, that means that pound is getting weaker. So at the moment we see your GBP buying and that is obviously why GJ is selling, GU is selling, etc. So I use this for correlation purposes. So let's see what we can expect for your GBP this week. And then obviously we'll see what we can expect for bond going into this week as well. Hey guys, so your GBP, once again, I don't actually trade your GBP. Um, your GBP I mostly use for correlation purposes. Um, if I know it's going to be in a buying trend, I'll obviously focus on um, selling GBP USD, GBP JPY, etc. So last week I did a market update where I showed you guys that we are currently sitting in a nice channel to the downside. So in the channel, we obviously formed a lower low, then a lower high. So this was supposed to move into new lows, but price formed a higher low indicating a possible shift of momentum. Then price went and created a higher high and we know from GBPUSD, same thing, different time frames, but still gonna correlate to another continuation to the top side. So already I knew that your GBP is buying. So through your GBP is buying, I knew that GA is selling, GJ is selling, um, GU is selling. So I knew the natural trend of what's happening. Okay. But once again, as traders, we know that as soon as we go to a high point after a push, you have a pullback. So I knew going into to this week, um, well, into last week, that there is a pullback due because we pushed into highs and there's usually a pullback then. From the pullback, we're obviously taking the continuation. So what I do then is I focus on price action. I focus on candlestick patterns, market patterns, whatever it might be. So into Monday morning, we formed this high point and we formed the high low. So we were still in a buying trend. And if you just used the normal strategy of a pullback and a buy, you would have had a nice continuation trade, perfect spinning bottoms, uh, morning star formation, etc. But then price failed to break that area once again. So that should trigger something in your brain. So like, well, Price hits that level again, bearish engulfing candle, hangman on the top of a trend, multiple candle indications. So there's something happening. So now if you have a nice leg to the top side, a push to the downside and another double top, that leads to what we call a M pattern. Okay. And that usually leads to a sell off. Okay. So really I knew that, okay, I can be targeting a break of the structure over here. And then once price breaks the structure, Obviously, wait for a pullback, and there's our pullback into our 61 to 78% FIB. And already we know that we were targeting the slow points over here. I can't find the arrows now. There we go. So, already we know that we're targeting on the smaller time frames. We're targeting the pullback into this level for us to obviously look for, for a buy continuation on the bigger time frames. So, there wasn't a lot of trading. Um, being happening, you could have taken that small position up there, but if you fail to identify um, the price reversal, um, then obviously you would get stuck in a stop loss. But I mean, you had so much bigger candle indication. Um, look at that hangman candle spinning tops as well. So it's always really important to monitor your trade. When you trade, understand, look at it and try and find out what is happening. Is the price reversing on me? Is the price still fine? Is the trade still fine? Should I maybe put stops to break even or whatever it might be? And as we dipped into the selling level as well, look at that hangman candle, perfect hangman candle on the one hour, six hour time frame. 
and that obviously causes a nice sell off to the downside. So sometimes you do, you you do just need to flip through through the different time frames and try and find out what is the confirmation because if you miss that six hour confirmation, you obviously miss the current sell position. And that should also indicate to you that we should have a pullback on GJ, GU, et cetera. Okay, for, for those of you that actually made it to this point of the video, I really appreciate all the support. Once again, there's a reason we see 90% losing rate in, in Forex traders. Um, I think people don't always realize the commitment it takes. Um, just a simple 15, 20 minute video might be the reason um, you're not succeeding because if you can't even withstand watching a guy speaking about something that you're supposed to love for 15 minutes, what do you think is the odds of you actually succeeding in the market? So thanks everyone for watching, keep putting in the work and then I'll see you guys on the next one.